An elevator ascends the stack of a power plant. The new male, and interestingly enough, his father is Herbert, who was produced over at Valley. At the top, a rare bird. We just looked in there. The male is in there on the eggs right now. So I don't know what, how he's going to react to us. But we'll find out. Peregrine falcons have been calling We Energy's power plants home since the 1990s. This guy's protecting eggs at our Pleasant Prairie plant. He's going to be a good dad. Usually only mother falcons are this protective. It's pretty rare to see a father hold his ground. A surprise even to veteran peregrine researcher Greg Septon. The males are usually out of here. Sometimes they'll hold their ground, but I've never had one come back in and actually get back down on the eggs and start incubating while we're there, you know, two feet away. That's that's pretty unusual. The falcon is perched in a nest box high atop a Wee Energy's power plant in Pleasant Prairie, Wisconsin. But why is this a good home for peregrines when historically they've nested on cliffs? Well, today we have man-made cliffs. We have tall chimneys, we have tall buildings, we have grain elevators, mostly power plants, but we have all these tall structures along the shorelines and peregrines are attracted to them. So much so that peregrine falcons have moved into nest boxes at six of our power plants. But it wasn't always this way. The peregrine falcon was nearly extinct after the pesticide DDT worked its way up the food chain. By 1964, peregrines were virtually extinct east of the Mississippi River. It took a concerted effort to bring the bird back, and We Energies was one of the first companies to get involved, not only installing nest boxes, but releasing captive produced peregrines as well. Even in the, the modern world we live in, even in an urban setting, you can make a difference for wildlife. We Energies has been involved in the state's peregrine falcon recovery efforts since the 90s, and during that time, it's estimated that nearly 20% of the state's peregrine population has come from our facilities. We wouldn't know any of that without trans these birds and that's why banding is so important. Every spring Septon retrieves chicks from our power plant nest boxes. A dicey job when protective parents are around. They dive down trying to strike the highest object in sight, in this case a broom, instead of Septon's head. Once safely inside, it's banding time. First one's a male. Males are about a third smaller than the females when you get them so situated your first that we have been two bands applied to them. The first one is a purple Fish and Wildlife Service band. That lets us know the birds from the Midwest. That will also have black over red color bands on the other leg. That allows us to identify these birds visually. I'll take a small blood sample for DNA. We've got probably the largest DNA repository anywhere in the world up at the University of Minnesota at St. Paul. We've been taking uh, DNA from peregrines for over 25 years. So we've got a tremendous database to work from. They look like fuzzy little golf balls. These local students attended a banding event at our Pleasant Prairie plant and got to name the chicks. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> at our Port Washington plant, a group from Wisconsin's Natural Resources Foundation was invited to banding. One visitor came from Minnesota because she has a special bond with these birds. Andy Fruna, the mother of the chicks, uh, was banded on May 20th of 2009 and I held her after she was banded so I kind of have a little connection with her. She's been able to follow the mother falcon from her banding in Indianapolis to her current home in Port Washington thanks to modern day technology. All of our nest boxes are equipped with cameras which are linked to our website so the whole world can watch. The cameras can capture band numbers too. It's amazing. I, there's no way I would have ever known where she ended up without these cameras and the technology to zoom in on the bands and verify who she is and where she is. We're closing in on 200 peregrines produced at We Energy sites. That includes our Presque Isle power plant in Marquette, Michigan, expanding the company's efforts to two states. It shows, you know, a commitment by the, the companies and parties that have the nest boxes there. Well, this is just a great thing. I hope that this can keep going on and on, and other states will do this. After learning how to fly and hunt, these chicks are gone in a flash. They're the fastest animal in the world, flying more than 200 miles an hour when stooping for prey. But for a few short weeks each spring, we get to witness these creatures up close, knowing that mankind is helping this rare species take flight.